Welcome back, friends. I'm Reverend Lisa Talbot, and this is Raven Fed. In this series, we are exploring and experimenting with spiritual practices. This year has thrown us all off of course in such a variety of ways that, like me, you might be floundering a little bit in your spiritual practices. Those things that worked before to uplift and sustain you may not be helping you right now. And so we're going to take a season, this back to school season, when it's traditional to start new things and learn new things, to experiment with spiritual practices and find those things that speak to our hearts right now. Today, we're going to talk about journaling, and I'm going to talk about three specific types of journaling, morning pages, gratitude journaling, and guided journaling. form of journaling that was created by author and uh, filmmaker Julia Cameron in her book uh, The Artist Way is called Morning Pages. And morning pages are a specific type of journaling that, as you can tell from the title, is done first thing in the morning. And it is a stream of consciousness journaling. The goal of morning pages is as soon as you wake up, as soon as possible after you wake up, and especially before you pick up your phone and start scrolling through social media, to write out longhand three stream of consciousness pages to just download whatever is going on in your brain. You might write down about the dreams that you had the night before. If you woke up with a worry on your heart, you can write that down. If you have a nervousness about what the day is going to bring, you can talk about that. If you're joyful about something that happened, the contents doesn't matter. What matters is the writing process to wake up and just completely get down on paper anything that is swirling through your mind to clear out your heart and mind so you are open to receive inspiration. Now, there's one place in Morning Pages where Julia Cameron and I depart. She says when your Morning Pages are done, throw them away. Burn them, tear them up. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that, obviously. I still have my middle school journals. Um, I keep my Morning Pages within the uh, journal that I'm using on a regular basis. My Morning Pages are interspersed throughout there. Um, and so I have uh, those that I do in the morning along with others, but I keep all of them. And that's something that you can decide to do. Uh, if it is an exercise for you of just clear the mind and getting rid of your worries and you don't feel the need to keep those, then throw them away, tear them up. That can be really cathartic. But if you do like to keep track and uh, keep as a memento your journals, you don't have to throw them away. But that is one form of journaling, the kind of stream of consciousness Whatever's on your mind, uh, you might be writing about what's gone on during the course of the day or what you anticipate for the day ahead, how you feel about it, um, people or situations that are concerning you or that are bringing you joy. So morning pages are one form of journaling that you might consider as a spiritual practice. A second form of journaling is gratitude journaling. We're learning more and more about the way our brains work, and we're learning that the more we keep focused on gratitude, the better our moods are, the more joyful we can be in life, and the more we start looking for the silver linings in situations. So one way to gratitude journal would be just to keep a bulleted list. It could be by the bedside, it could be in your digital or paper planner, it could be on your desk at work or on the kitchen table where your whole family can add to it. 
and just keep a list of things that you're grateful for. Normally people will write down three to five gratitudes a day. Sometimes this is nice to do in the evening before bed so that as you're winding down, you can reflect on what you're grateful for from that day and go to bed with a little bit more joy in your heart having reflected on your blessings of the day. There are prompts that you can find online for gratitude journaling and there are actually bound journals that are specifically gratitude journals that you can find as well if you like a very well outlined directed kind of journal. But the simplest form of that is to just write down three things a day that you're grateful for as your gratitude journal. The final kind of journaling is guided journaling. And I use this as a great big umbrella term because there are so many different ways to do guided journaling. If you Google journal prompts, you will find a bazillion different options of prompts that help us spark your creativity as you sit down to write. Sometimes people say, I don't know what to write down. And so sometimes if that's a struggle that you have, then using journaling prompts can help and you can find those online. There are also journals that are created specifically to give you some guidelines on, on how to write or what to write or even how much to write each day. Uh, one type of journal um, that I have is this uh, question and answer Q&A five year journal. And for each day of the year, it has five slots, one for each year for five years, and there is a question in it. And each year on that day, you answer that same question. And so over the course of five years, you can see how your answers have changed. Here's one that says, how much time do you spend commuting? That might change over the course of five years as you move or change careers or or like right now, work from home if that's a possibility for you. Um, and so it's a way of keeping track of that. Some of these questions are a very creative. Here's one that says, if you were a literary character, who would you be? Some of them can um, be a, a little bit more reflective on uh, how you want to live your life or how you feel or believe about things. Here's one that says, who do you want to know better? Isn't that a great question? And so uh, a five-year journal or something like that is laid out specifically to give you questions to respond to over the course of those five years. There are all sorts of journals that do this. The last time I was in Anchorage, which was like nine months ago now, eight, seven months ago, um, I ran by my goals because that's what you got to do when you're in Anchorage. And I found these little teeny tiny journals there. I don't even know if it says how many pages, 40 pages. And I think they were on sale for $2 a piece, maybe $4 a piece at the most. And uh, one of them is called Inspiration, one is called Spiritual, one is called Wellness. And these little journals are laid out with specific prompts on the pages, sections already delineated for you to help you know what to write. The Inspiration Journal, um, I liked a lot too because it had that same kind of layout where it gives you the prompts to use. And this says reasons to be happy and it gives you a one through five list to fill out. Reasons to be excited and one through five. Reasons to be thoughtful, reasons to be energized. Things that I want to do this month, a way I'm going to challenge myself, what I learned this month. And so it's neat sometimes, especially if you're feeling a little bit stuck, to have a journal tell you what to do. <laughs> have a journal tell you what it is you're going to write. And sometimes I feel like these guided journals are really helpful at, at um, getting your pilot light lit. <laughs> so that your creativity can start to flow a little bit more. I think especially in this time of overwhelm that we live in, oftentimes it is easier to just answer a question than it is to try to generate stuff on your own. I hope that the next few days you will experiment with journaling and see if it is a spiritual practice 
that speaks to you during this time. Thanks so much for being with me today. I hope that you will please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And in a few days, I'll see you again with another spiritual practice to experiment with. Take care. Bye-bye.